you see how expensive it is for you when you need to change your batteries on your EV in five years time. Singapore isn't suitable to own EVs because there's just not enough EV chargers. You see so many EVs fires lately, EV batteries are a hazard because they combust easily. So after around 1,000 comments from my latest two EV videos, I began to see a trend of people commenting about the cons, the impracticalities, and even the danger of owning an EV, especially here in Singapore. Now, some of those negative comments reason why owning an EV here is foolish. And a good percentage of them talks about the infrastructure or the lack thereof uh, in Singapore. And a small number actually harp on how our government actually sabotages EV ownership, like uh, there is a conspiracy theory or something. But other than these rather subjective, baseless and even comical comments, right? There were quite a few people sharing their opinions uh, or worries such as the range of an EV, the difficulty or inconvenience of charging one, uh, their resale value which actually generated uh, long discussion threads at times, and this topic, batteries degradation. So I thought of changing my tune a bit in this video by attempting to share what I've researched about EV battery technology and perhaps debunk a few myths at the same time. So here goes. I'll attempt to touch on three of the most discussed about objections on EV batteries. But before that, allow me to qualify that I'm not here to change your mind if you're set on the idea that EV and whatever technologies behind one is a bad idea or stupid or even evil, like there's a worldwide conspiracy to get everyone to own one so that the government can raise electricity prices to make you pay more in the end. I mean, if you know that an EV isn't for you, this video is probably not for you too. You can go about replying to all my comments and call me names, right? But if you wish to prove a point, feel free to make your own video to do so, okay? Therefore, my intent is for this video to educate. Um, and I'll try to do so as much as I can by sharing articles, news, and videos to substantiate my point. Again, I'm not here to convert you and you don't have to impose your anti-EV sentiments on me. I just wish for those who are considering getting an EV to get a more educated view on EVs, specifically EV batteries. So first myth to debunk, EV batteries don't last long and will degrade to be useless in a few years. Now, I reckon that most of the comparisons are made to our phones and how long can the battery last in one. Many of those who commented are adamant that EV batteries will degrade until a state of uselessness in just a few years. I infer that they mean within 5 to 8 years perhaps. And as a result, right, the car will need a battery replacement before the end of its life. And in Singapore's case, that is 10 years. So firstly, the construct of lithium-ion batteries in phones aren't the same as the batteries in cars. Phone batteries are built to be as small as possible while having the highest capacity. And most phone manufacturers are not really concerned to make the battery last beyond 3 to 5 years, let alone 8 to 10 years. EV batteries on the other hand, right, can and must be larger. With warranties of 8 years or 150,000 kilometers, often mandated by many countries on the EV dealerships, right? It will make zero economic sense for them to not ensure that the construct of their batteries last much longer. And there's also the thing about cycle life, or how many times the battery can be charged or discharged. While newer phone batteries typically last 1,000 cycles until the battery is considered unusable, uh, which means the state of health is below 70% typically. Modern EV batteries are rated for at least 3,000 to 5,000 cycles even. 
And then we need to think about the frequency of charges. That is the number of times we charge in a given time. So for our phones, right, most of us charge every day, sometimes twice a day. But in an EV, most owners will charge a deep cycle, meaning from around 10% to 80% only once a week, perhaps twice a week. Others like me sometimes charge only once a fortnight. So to get to that 3000 cycles, it will take more than 10 years. In fact, even if you DC charge your EV daily, right, it will take some eight to 10 years to clock those many cycles. One more thing I'd like to add, in my research, I discovered that a fundamental factor in EV batteries to last much longer is the thermal managing system in the car. Batteries in general don't like heat, but charging batteries will generate heat. So in EVs, there is a system of fans and liquid cooling to regulate the battery's temperature while charging. Now enough of what I mentioned above. Here are some articles on the longevity of modern EV batteries. Like this one that claims on average EV batteries maintain 90% capacity after 100,000 kilometers and stabilize at around 87% between 200,000 to 300,000 kilometers. This analysis was made by testing over 7,000 EVs. Then there is this other article from Wired.com, which is a much more popular source, which reports similar findings. And if you still need more backing, right, watch this video. For those of you who don't understand Chinese, the BYD E6 taxi driver is saying that he is still on his original battery at 5 years with only 20% of degradation. And get this, after 717,000 kilometers of driving. Now, it might sound astonishing with such figures. I know I would be if I still put on my old mindset of battery degradation from 10 years ago. But modern batteries such as the LFP batteries found in BYDs and many other brands are much different from the older NMC technology found in older EVs such as uh, the Nissan Leaf and older Tesla models. And even those older models right, from as far back as 2013 still have more than 80% of battery capacity after all these years. In any case, dealers here like Vantage Auto, Harmony Auto, and I believe all of the other EV dealers, they offer a warranty of eight years or 160,000 kilometers for their batteries. With newer model getting something like 10 year warranty also. So for me, right, this is peace of mind if my batteries fail or degrade beyond a certain state of health within this time. Still not convinced? And you want even more proof? Well, try googling for and reading the dozens of other research articles or better yet, ask a real EV driver who's driven for a few years now instead of relying only on hearsay on forums or worse, trolls comments. If you don't already know, you'll probably be as surprised as I was with the advancement of battery technology. Okay now, let's move on to the next argument. But before that, do like this video if you haven't. And make sure that you subscribe so that you get to watch future videos like this one. Or even read the hundreds of comedic comments. I mean, YouTube tells me that 98% of you who watched my previous videos weren't subscribed. Anyway, let's continue with our second argument, which is that our national grid cannot provide enough electricity to all the EVs. Now, admittedly, I really don't know enough of this topic to debate, so I'll just attempt to illustrate using some simple math. Uh, feel free to disagree with my figures or workings, but do educate us accordingly, okay? So we need to find out uh, how much EVs contribute to electricity consumption in Singapore in 2024 first. Now, so to do that, right, we need to know how much electricity did the country uh, consume last year. So. Uh, a quick search reveals it to be um, 55.4 terawatt hour 
of electricity uh, of electricity so uh, we now move on to the cars now, I can't really find the latest figures but let's assume that we had 20,000 EVs uh, by the end of last year and that each uh, one of them was consuming an average of 100 kilowatt hour of electricity per week for the whole year which I think is kind of high but never mind okay so let's just assume this we will end up with uh, something like one 104 million kilowatt hour or 0.104 terawatt hour so that's 0.18 percent of our national grid consumption now suppose we 10x the number of EVs to 200,000 to cater to the increase in adoption of EVs by 2030 and let's use the figures by EMA for a uh, national consumption growth of 3% yearly over the next few years. So we'll derive at uh, 55.4 times 1.03 times 1.03 times 1.03 times 1.03 times 1.03 and we'll have 64.2 terawatt hour. So at 10 times the number of EVs, right, assuming that every owner drives as much as today, which is unlikely uh, due to the fact that satellite uh, ERP will be implemented after our GE, and future EV batteries remain similar in efficiency as today, which again should improve by then, well, it means that EVs will take up uh, 1.04 divide by 64.2 which is equal 1.6 percent now i'm a layman but this percentage right i don't really think that our grid won't be able to support our evs on the road right besides with all the scholars uh, in our government sectors right I, I highly doubt that they won't see the potential problem of having not enough electricity uh, electricity for all the EVs on the road that a random YouTuber through I mean commenter can see right okay on to the last myth to debunk and this one is by far the most popular argument I see not only in my comments but also every other video or news articles EV batteries are dangerous and prone to burning or exploding and you've probably seen this with every car fire video people watch on TikTok or Facebook the most common question commenters will ask or even expertly state is that there has got to be an EV remember the unfortunate Porsche crash at Nico Highway that burst into flames yes it must be an EV say the people even with it being a Porsche, right, even with trails of petrol fire on the ground, they still claim that that is an EV. Oh, how about that Corolla that caught fire in Jurong West? Or the burning C-Class at Tampines? Or even those two cars on the PIE? It's quite comical to read in the comments that burning cars equal EVs. I mean, just take a look at the statistics provided by SDF. Of the 220 vehicle fires in 2024 right only one of them involved an ev now the reason for such misconception is most likely hearsay uh, a lack of education or worse a deep hatred for evs to a state that people believe what they want to believe the lfp batteries in modern evs such as the blade battery in uh, byd are so much safer than those in the past arguably uh, even safer than petrol cars. This rather famous clip shows how, if a nail is punctured through an older NMC battery, will cause it to catch fire. Wow, the same thing done on a blade battery on the BYD, right? Barely raises the temperature. And there's this other test of a truck driving over the battery pack. Now, admittedly, it is not the full weight of the truck considering how the battery is placed, but with the two rear wheels on it, right, I reckon it's still maybe something like 20% of the weight of the truck. Okay, okay. 
I think that's enough for this video. It's kind of long already, but still, I think it's more efficient for me to make a video like this one to debunk the myths on EV batteries and perhaps more effective too as opposed to replying to each and every comment. And worse, right, for them to refute me by uh, baseless counter-arguments. My point is this. It's okay to not agree with me. It's also totally fine that you think that EVs are the biggest scam and you will never touch one. I'm not forcing you to adopt an EV and no one, not even the salesman in the EV dealership can force you to buy one. But to keep disputing on proven facts and real life experiences without the ability to substantiate, well, I think this isn't the best idea. I recommend that you save your energy to be concerned with bigger life issues. I am not a scientist, I'm not an engineer, and for certain I'm not a car influencer, certainly not an EV influencer, and I bet neither are most of my competitors. But what I am, different from many of them, is that I am an EV owner who have used, driven and experienced an EV for months. I think I stand to be more qualified to present factual findings and my real-world experiences on EVs than those who haven't even sat in one, yes? Okay, let's not turn this into a rant anymore. But allow me to say this. Among the 1,000 plus comments are many who agree with what I mentioned. You commented with your own practical experience. And some of you are from other countries like Malaysia, um, Hong Kong, or even Australia. And I genuinely thank you for commenting. Not because you agree with me or support me, but I really appreciate you educating those who are having the wrong notions of uh, EVs. And of course, there are also those uh, of you who disagree on my points, but sensibly present your perspective. So to these people, right, I sincerely respect your opinions and beliefs, and I'll never say that you're wrong. But for those who kept trolling, right, well, actually, I also want to thank you too, because you'll be helping me with increased uh, engagement on my videos, and in turn, also getting those videos watched by many more other people. Okay, anyway, we'll see how this video does. And if this is a well-received uh, enough video, right, I could be doing another myth-busting video on another aspect of EV ownership, maybe on charging, uh, or even on the hottest debate, which is resale value. Let me know in the comments below, okay?